All right. Emily, it's time to get up. Expected. It's that time of year again. It's the Tinley Park NARVC show in Tinley Park, Illinois. It's the biggest reptile show in the United States, and we are so excited. I don't know what we're going to get, but there's going to be a ton of people and a ton of reptiles there. Guys, I'm so sorry in advance. I'm editing the Tinley video and I'm just now realizing that the microphone was too close to our mouths when we were filming. We're still new to the whole, this, this specific microphone. It's only the second time we've used it. And we used it improperly all day for all of the interviews. So it's gonna sound kind of gainy, I think the term would be, because it was overexposed. And for that, I apologize. I'm so sorry, but they have some great information they want to share with you, so I'm not going to just throw out their footage. I will add subtitles so that you can still hear or read what they are saying. So I'm really sorry, but don't blame them. Blame me. It was totally my fault for how close I put the uh, mic. Um, and I've learned my lesson. Okay, back to it. I'm Janie Younger, and this is my little business. This is Creative Ectothermic Solutions, which means created cold-blooded solutions, basically, but ectothermic sounds so much cooler. And we have the no-bone zone, inverts only. We specialize in bugs. This is a cool bug. Oh, I see it. This is a giant vinegaroon. They look like the meanest things in the world. These little whips are like a blind man's canes. They explore their environment. They live in caves. They can totally be completely upside down and awesome. And their one defense, they secrete vinegar, so they smell funny. They can't hurt you at all. They just kind of... Yep, and that's a little girl. The boys have way bigger claws, and the girls have round little abdomens. They're cute. They're, uh, they're smelly sometimes. I mean, if you were really hungry and you didn't have any vinegar for your salad, you could just put one on your salad and scare it. Well, perfect. <laughs> What do, you, what do you feed them? Are they just they eat crickets. Oh, that's easy. They love crickets. I've seen a lot of people leaving with your blue death painting beetles. That's because blue death painting beetles are totally awesome. They either come by the beetle or I set them up in these little tanks because this has everything they need and they just trundle about and do beetle things. And the, the, the reason why they're called blue death painting beetles is not because they're blue death. People keep saying, Blue Death, how could you sell those? It's like, no, 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 they're death fading beetles. They are the fading goats of the beetle world. So what you do is you pick one up and you scare it. Boo! And then you drop her, and she's dead! Oh, no! Those are the drag this, queens of This them. one is obviously not really committed to her acting career because she's uh, she's not staying dead, but that's the basic idea is you frighten them. They're, they're predators or sight hunters, like red runners, so they would peck the beetle, and the beetle would play dead so the red runner couldn't find it. These guys are detritivores, so they eat detritus. They eat leaves and sticks, and they get their water out of succulents in the wild, which they have a succulent in here, but I feed them uh, little carrot discs and uh, cucumbers, which they run and stand on their head on top of and suck all the moisture out of. And then we have Mama Scorpion and her scorpion. I've never this is a, a big before. Asian forest scorpion. And here are her little babies. These babies are about three months old, and Mom is still taking care of them. When they're born, they're white, and they, uh, they ride around on her back. Yeah. And eventually, when they get big enough, they uh, they molt out and they climb down off her back and become real bugs. And she's completely relaxed. Her belly's down on me and her tail's down, and she's cool with it. The weirdest fact I know about scorpions, when they poop, they poop right here at the end of their tails. 
They don't have any vents on the bottom, so that's where the poop comes from, right there at the end of their tail. Scorpions glow under black light. All scorpions glow this green color. If you come to a con, pick up my card and call me on the phone. I'm Mike Bryant with the Snake Lab. Um, I guess the snake that everyone's kind of interested in is this really interesting uh, pod that we made this past year. Uh, this was to one of our big pied females with a reduced pattern clown pet pod. Uh, it came out with this crazy pattern that looks like a, a QR code. You know, I, I wondered if it would fade out when it, when it shed the first time. And so far it's holding in there really good. We got the siblings here actually for sale. So we hit uh, four pods and uh, three double heads yeah. out of the pairing. Yep. And uh, none of the others have it, but I'm gonna hold him back and uh, see if we can replicate that next year, hopefully. I've had a lot of people trying to buy it. And actually, the day that it crawled out of the egg and I posted pictures, uh, a guy asked me if I was gonna sell it, and I, I told him I probably would and I gave him a price on it that is way lower than what I would take for it now, and he was like, I don't know about all that. So I'm really happy that, that he didn't take it. <laughs> Did you come up with that? Uh, so it's kind of a combo between my girlfriend and I. Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, cool. She calls them Scantron. Other than that, we work on a lot of like uh, multi-recessive stuff. We're working with the Xanthic Pied Project a lot. Uh, this year we made a lot of triple heads, so Xanthic Pied Clowns, and then of course the Xanthic Pied Albinos. So what are we doing, Emily? We're going to Dunkin' Donuts because we don't have them at home. And somebody had one in her hand and now I really want one. A drink, a drink. Not a donut, a drink. <laughs> or you, Starbucks. Didn't you have coffee this morning though? You can never have enough coffee in the day, especially when it's Tinley. I need more caffeine. There's a lot of people in there. in stores, so I think you should show us maybe a couple. A few? All right. Few. So this one's really cool. I'm really happy with this one. This was actually the idea of one of my engineers, Brad. He was really, he was one that helped me work on all the front opening tanks. And after it was done, he, and we kind of launched the front opening terrariums, he's like, hey, come look at this. And uh, he's like, well, it'd be kind of cool if we did a bow front. So we did, because there's nothing like this, and it adds this cool premium designer kind of look to it. It's really funny how just taking the front glass and bowing it makes it so much different than the other one. Huge difference. Well, yeah. we have bow front like aquariums, so why not bow front terrariums? Exactly. But it's cool, because you look at it, like the glass doors, I mean, it's obviously, but the glass doors are curved, so that's curved wow. glass. The background, we actually added some extra depth to. So this tree in the background is almost two inches thick, so there's wow. areas for your animals to like sit on it, you can stick plants on it, you can do a bunch more stuff with it, and it kind of plays on that extra three inches of depth you get with the terrarium. And is this the only one that's... This is the only one that anyone gets to see. They oh. actually will be in stores probably in June or July. Um, and this one, uh, we put in the auction for US Arc last night to raise money for US Arc, who everybody should know about and learn about. Mm -hmm. um, and it went for a lot of money to US Arc, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. So a lot of generous people here donating to yeah. US Ark. And that's the funnest part about it. It's just a big family. I tell everybody, Tinley is a family reunion with like that reptile show over there. <laughs> right. What it it is. really is. All those reptile people getting together. Yeah. It's that <laughs> Midwest culture that love we all have for each other we're all family right right <laughs> so there you go guys this is the one and only Bowfront zilla terrarium that you will see until they are launched in july that's so cool uh, we get to see them uh, it's pretty it's i figured if anybody should see it it should be the people here <laughs> well this is just a sneak peek <laughs> to a future video where we may or may not be getting a behind the scenes tour of the you, zilla headquarters you, you might have to come play with stuff i think we do have to so yeah. play with some scaly babies yeah there's some pretty cool ones cool <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> For sure. Thank you, guys. I'm Rufus with Rufus Garden Reptiles. And you specialize in sand boas, right? Yes. Nice. Any specific um, morphs? Uh, a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, paradox albinos, paradox snows. So I know in um, like ball pythons, paradox isn't genetic. Is it in sand boas? Yes, it is. It's a simple recessive trait. So That's it? it? Can, it yes. Just That's recessive? It. Yeah. That's nice. This is actually a paradox albino. And it's a, it's a little bit unusual in that it, it looks a little uh, lighter than most of the others, almost like a paradox snow. They probably average around 10 to, to 15 babies a litter, but they can have upwards to 40. Wow, really? Uh, yeah, it's, that's a bit unusual, but really the, just the older that they get, you know, they tend to have larger litters. So. What substrate would you recommend then? Because I know there's controversy with that. Th there is. And, you know, it, it's really just whatever works for the individual. I prefer uh, cypress mulch and aspen chips. Oh, like mixed together? No, actually or? one or the other. Right. I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the benefit of the, of the cypress mulch or anything similar to that is that you can control the humidity. And so, you know, you can keep it dry if you want. If you notice they're having a little bit of problem shedding their skin, you just add some water to it and mm -hmm. to raise that humidity level. A lot of people think that, you know, since they're called sand boas, they think, oh, well, they, they need it really dry. But actually, they do better with a, a higher humidity. Really? Uh, yeah, maybe closer to around 50, 55 percent, something like that. And their skin condition will be almost perfect, you know? So when you see people who give them actual sand as mm -hmm. a substrate, not a fan? It, well, no, that's fine too. As Again, as long as you're not having any problems with the, the skin being shed, that kind of thing. I use it with my Arabian sand boas, but all my other ones I, I don't. Yeah, the black Russian, they're actually from Kazakhstan. Oh, look at the sheen they have. Yeah, beautiful. and they are black all over, even, even on the belly. Just a little bit of speckling on the sides. Right, right. Some of them will have that speckling like that. Some will have a little bit of a, of a pattern like this black one over here. They have the same basic care as the Kenyan sand boa. So yeah, relative to like say a corn snake, uh, these eyes are more on top of the head. And then with say your Arabian sand boa like back here, you know, they are, they are right on top, oh. right on top of the head. Wow, how did I miss that? And so when they burrow under the sand, I mean, literally it's just those two little eyes sticking out. Those are actually egg layers. Really? Right. Yes, but they're still a type of boa. They, they are. Boas were live bears. Uh, well, most most boas are live bears. Okay. But you you do have some that lay eggs, like um, the Arabian sand boa and the Saharan sand boa as well. I guess there's except, exceptions it, to every rule. It, yeah, there seems to be. <laughs> there seems wow. to be. Oh. Uh, I'm Brenda and this is Ben. We're with Fire and Ice Geckos. Uh, we've been breeding leopard geckos for about, this is I think our eighth or ninth season now. Yeah. And our first two projects that we got into was um, Max Snow and um, Super Snows and um, Tangerine, which is where our name came from. 
the, the fire, fire, and, fire ice. and ice is from the Max Snow. We have now progressed over into um, some higher end morphs like Black Knights and um, also the Raining Red Stripes are a really popular project with us too. So the Black Knight, we have one along with us. So these were imported from Europe. Uh, Darling Geckos, Angela Mack, she brought them over and then uh, we got into a, a co-project with her. We bred it to um, a super snow eclipse to try to add some pied markings into the Black Knight line. So that's, uh, we've called it our panda project. And uh, so we're trying to add the pied markings, the white legs, the white face, and the white neck into and an all black full black echo. eyes and everything. And the full too. black eyes as well. So we're still a work in progress, but we're getting there. My favorite um, is the raining red stripes. Those guys are my favorite. It's a rain water albino mixed with red stripe, and we get a, and we also add in some white and yellow, and we get a lot of um, straight orange lines down the back of the leopard gecko. And on a white base. on a white background, right? A so white it's base. just white and orange stripes, yeah. and it's just getting better and better every year. And it wasn't that so. something that we completely imagined we were going to be doing. It just it popped out of a pairing looking just crazy white base orange stripes down the back and just it started it, it started started a new project all in itself they're definitely one of the easiest geckos and reptiles to start with you don't need a whole lot of first setup you start with a 10 gallon tank you can go bigger 20 gallon whatever an under tank heater hide a thermostat of course so you can control the heat and no loose substrates it's just it doesn't get much just simpler than that right the the initial cost to get into a leopard gecko you can start under a hundred dollars and you can't do that with many other reptiles really um, a lot of people do provide lighting but they shouldn't we've been trying to educate people the under tank heat is best and that's much cheaper than buying so many bulbs all the time yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. All of ours are raised on mealworms. They, they come out uh, and they eat mealworms right out of the egg. And then once they're about 15 grams, we switch them to the giant mealworms. And then we supplement that with uh, calcium and vitamins powder. Right. And you just you can put it in a cap in the enclosure and they'll just go lick it as they need it. They know how much, what they need and when they need it. Or we just put it in the mealworm dish and the mealworms walk around in it so they get it that way. Or they can go lick it up as they need it from there also. We have lots of different things. Um, ball pythons, hognose snakes, uh, Kenyan sand boas, chameleons of all sorts and um, crested Veiled geckos. Veiled and jacksons and right. panther chameleons. All sorts we do. of reptiles. Snakes. They're gonna love it. Isn't that cool? What about those? Nothing. Hey, it's Brandon Osborne from Osborne Reptiles. Specialize in pides. I got hooked in 92 when I first saw a pied in a book. Uh, currently we have around 30 different pied combo projects in the works. But what we're most known for is our urban camos, which popped up about 10 years ago by complete accident. The name is very fitting. We didn't name the combo. It was kind of a hobby consensus because it has the gray, black, white urban camo look. This is a sandblast super pewter possible het pod. The sandblast is a pretty appropriate name because what it does is it basically sandblasts the pattern off of the snakes. Down here is the, the darker version, which is the silver bullet. This is a low expression animal. We patched a few that were around 50% white and they are just amazing looking. Okay, we also have Bertha. This is the founder het pod of our pied obsession. She has produced probably 150 babies at a minimum. Her current weight is 7,538 grams. She's pretty beefy, but she is the great, great grandmom of all of the pies that we have available. Yeah. She's 16, right? Yeah, she's 16 years old this year. And we we bred her to a banana pie this year because I, I think it would be awesome to see a, a giant banana pie. 
And most of her babies are coming out like, like they're like 4,000 grams already. Yeah, several. yeah, we've got several pied offspring that we've raised up from her that are in the four to 5,000 gram range. So they're, they're really big animals. Uh, babies hatch out averaging about 90 grams out of the egg. And we've hatched a handful over the years that were 120 grams out of the egg. Her last clutch was 19 eggs in 2017. And she's 1,000 grams heavier now than she was then. Average clutch size for me is about six to eight. Yeah. It's nice to get three clutches in one from one female. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping she hits 20. That was an amazing weekend at the Tinley Park NARBC show. We met more people than we have ever met before who have watched our channel, and it was so awesome. I am exhausted though, and you're pretty tired too, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we're both so tired, but we want to show you everything we're going home with. We are not going home empty handed. Uh, we got some feeders. I'll just start, I'll show you these really quick. We got some wax worms. These were free from uh, Timberline actually, and they're the Vitabugs, so they're going to last forever. Same with these mealworms that we got from Timberline. And I bought some giant mealworms from someone who was selling them by the shot. Like he'd take a shot glass and scoop it up, and it was like a dollar per shot, which I thought was kind of funny. So we got some feeders, which was one of the goals of this trip. The biggest purchase we made was actually uh, thermostats. We got two thermostats. This is the VE, the Vivarium Electronics. We got the VE 300 by two or two probes, right? Yeah. Ed's still teaching me about thermostats. And this is the Herpstat. I guess I'll just, should I take it out here? Yeah, we have a brand new Herpstat in here. Can't wait to try it out. We got one of each because we are going to pit these against each other with our new bull snake racks. And we're going to test them out and see which one works better because whoever uses one or the other swears by that brand and they don't try the other one. So we're going to try them both and see which one we like. I mean, we're going to use them both. We're going to like them yeah. both, but we're going to see which one we like better and review them on the channel in a future video. I got this. I think this is so cool. It's like a hangy cork bark thing that I'm going to give to our garter snakes and I can totally see them curling up in there. Ed thinks it's dumb, but I think it's really cool and it's going to provide enrichment. So I think they're going to have fun. You're going to get everybody to hate me on the table now. <laughs> no! Oh, man, it's amazing, Emily, that's the best thing you want! <laughs> you just think it's weird because I didn't make one myself. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I just okay. figured you could have made it yourself for I don't have the same time price for that. or cheaper. <laughs> Something that a couple of fans gave us, Mallory and Brad, they met up with us or found us at the show and gave us lint truffles. Thank you so much for the gift, you guys. You know my weakness, which is chocolate, especially lint and especially dark chocolate. So these are gonna last the whole ride home. And finally, we do have some live animals that we're going home with. Inside of this shoe box is actually something we picked up on the way to the Tinley show. Uh, one of our viewers had an unexpected clutch, or I guess litter, of uh, garter snakes. So he, gave, he didn't want them, and we're gonna help him find them new homes, which they are all claimed. I'm sorry, FYI, they are all claimed. I do have homes lined up for them. And they are so tiny and adorable. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting how little you are. Oh my gosh, they're so scared. Can I pull one of you out? We weren't sure how many there were gonna be, but there's seven in each of these Noodles & Company to-go containers. My goodness, you're so cute. I, I haven't held one yet, actually. This is the first time I'm holding one. They're so stinking small. Like the babies we had last year were some like twice or maybe even, yeah, probably about twice the size. So we're gonna have to give them the tiniest little bits of worms to start eating before we rehome them. We're gonna make sure that they're established eaters before we find them homes. Although I might end up keeping one for myself because they're so cute. There's 14 of them in total. That's a lot of little garter snakes. Thank you again, James, for these little cuties. And last but not least is our really exciting pickup that we didn't get until the last, literally the last minute of the show. Inside of these containers are little baby 
viper boas. This is a species that Ed and I have considered working with for several years. We actually came across these for the very first time at the first Tinley show we went to, but it seems like all of the ones that are available are wild-caught adults, which is why we've refrained from buying them. But today, we saw these captive bred babies available and we're like, okay, we've got to do it. We're going to try. I guess they're, they're pretty hardy species once you get them eating, but that's actually the downside to these is they are newborns and they have not been eating yet just because they're so young. As long as you get them eating, they are great little hardy snakes. And they are so cool. They have very rough scales. You can't tell right now because they're babies. I'm hoping that these do really well, but we do have to keep in mind that since they are not eating yet, they're so young, there is a small chance that one or the other may not make it. So that's why we got two instead of just one, just in case something happens to one of them. Here's the other one. This one has a lot of cool orange colors. Uh, along its body. Super pretty. You got some moss on your face, friend. There we go. So we're really excited about these guys. So yeah, I'd say it was a successful trip. Ed was a uh... Con Ed and I were both contemplating getting an elephant trunk snake, but we're not ready for one of those for the challenge involved with them. So for those of you I was talking to about them, we decided against it. Instead, we got these adorable little viper boas. As tired as we are, it was worth every minute, and it was so much fun meeting all of our fans. So if you're one of the people who stopped by and said hi, thank you for doing so. And to everyone just watching, thank you for all of your support as well. We also, as always, want to thank all of our Patreon supporters for backing this channel, and I'd like to wrap up by showing you a slideshow of all of the fans that we met. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.